Hello and welcome back to She Walks She Paints. Thank you so much for joining me again and as always if you have been liking, commenting or subscribing thank you so much for doing that, I really do appreciate it and it's really helping me grow my channel. If you are new here, me and my companion Jack Spaniels are going to be taking you on a walk in this beautiful country of Scotland and finding things to photograph and paint when I get home to my studio later. Today we've come to a place called Ceres which is in Fife and we're going to be doing a little walk through the historical village into the woodland walk along a stream which Jack will love because he's a complete water dog and we're going to be looking for some old ruins of buildings so there's a big lime kiln here which I think would be really cool to explore. It's a little bit more autumnal today there's definitely a nip in the air but the sun is out so I'm hoping it's going to warm up a bit. We're going to have a really nice woodland walk let's head out and see what we can find today. The village of Ceres was established around 700 years ago and it hosts the oldest Highland Games in Scotland, going back to 1314. The village name means place to the west in Gaelic and is probably in relation to St Andrews, which is about 10 miles away. Ceres was the last stopping off point for medieval pilgrims walking the route from Edinburgh to the Cathedral at St Andrews. This beautiful cobbled bridge is known as the Bishop's Bridge and is around 400 years old. It's strange to think about walking in the footsteps of all those people who would have crossed this bridge during its history. This was the old Tollbooth building, constructed in 1673 to house a prison cell in the basement and a warehouse on the ground floor so that goods could be checked on market days. This strange looking statue is widely accepted to be Thomas Buchanan, the village's last official provost in the late 1500s. The statue was installed in the churchyard of Ceres in the 1830s, but 100 years later it was sold to a private buyer in a nearby town. The villagers demanded that their mascot was returned, and in 1939 enough funds were raised both locally and abroad to return the figure to this location.
Ready. You check. Puppy dog. Let's go. I love these kind of woodland walks. They're just so peaceful and beautiful. These places are called dens in Scotland, so it's usually a steep sort of wooded gorge with a stream or a river at the bottom. Actually in Newcastle where I'm from, we call them a dean. So it's a very similar word, but just slightly different. There's a lot of words like that where I'm from in the north of England. Um, you'll often find links to the Scottish sort of language as well. You get a lot of these landscapes in Scotland. I think it's a glacial thing. Don't quote me on that, but I think it's the glaciers that left these steep gorges and now the rivers run through them. And they're just usually really nice places to come for a walk. You get so much wildlife, you get the birds, you get the trees. And it's just really relaxing to walk alongside the, the river as well. So yeah, I hope you're feeling that too.
impressive building, which suddenly looms up out of the landscape, is a rare surviving example of a lime kiln. These arches gave access to the coal fire, which was set at the base of the building. Limestone was loaded from the top of the kiln and slowly burned to remove the carbon dioxide, leaving calcium oxide, or quicklime. This residue was then raked from the bottom of the fire to be used as a fertiliser, or to be made into mortar for buildings. The structure dates back to 1814 and was in use until 1837. Most large-scale limeworks like this were redundant by the early 20th century, as modern fertilisers and cement replaced the products it made. Stones from the nearby ruined castle of Craig Hall, dating back to the 1630s, were reused to build the lime kiln. The castle was demolished in the 1950s, with only a few remnants of walls remaining. The rose hip is the fruit of the rose plant. This is probably a wild dog or field rose, with beautiful white or pale pink flowers in the summer. I love how, even after the summer has gone and the flowers faded, there is still such beauty to be found in these plants. Like many ruins of buildings that we can explore today, the experience is a very different one to how it would have been in its day. The fire would have burned day and night to keep production going. A far cry from this peaceful, overgrown woodland, where the ancient stones are being reclaimed by nature. The rocks above these caves were very unstable, so we didn't go inside. I think the castle would have been built on the land above here.
always stop and say hello if I see chickens on our walks. Someday, when we live in a less urban area, I want to keep chickens too. I feel like we've just walked through a hedgerow here so I'm feeling a bit um, like I have been dragged through a hedge backwards or forwards or whichever way <laughs> but really really nice walk that we had there I'm so happy we came and explored this den or Dean depending where you're from and yeah really interesting I love big old abandoned buildings like that lime kiln it's just so evocative and dramatic um, and it was quite a work a day kind of building but yeah it's just quite a dramatic building just appearing out of the landscape I've enjoyed all the bird song, I enjoyed walking by the stream and just a really really nice day I hope you enjoyed it too and I hope you found it relaxing now I just have to think of what I'm going to paint from today so I've got a few options I will see you in the studio to find out what I choose see you there Hi folks! Before I start this week's painting, I wanted to jump in and let you know some exciting news. I've been working on a calendar using my paintings from this year, and I'm happy to tell you that I've now finalised my design. Each month features a different piece that was painted in front of your eyes on this channel. The She Walks She Paints 2023 calendar is available to pre-order in my Etsy shop now, for £22 plus postage. If you wish to support my channel by purchasing a calendar, please head over to my Etsy shop. You can find the link in the video description below. I will hand sign each calendar and send out all the pre-orders in November to ensure that they arrive before the end of the year. Thank you so much to everyone who has been supporting my channel so far. Now it's back to the painting. I spent ages trying to work out a composition that worked with a portrait orientation. 
it took me longer than it should have done to realise that it would work much better as a landscape. This is why I like working out my compositions on scrap pieces of paper first. It allows me to make mistakes and try things out. I try to show my painting process in real time occasionally, as well as the sped up time lapse footage, to show how long it actually takes to paint. I usually paint for a maximum of an hour and a half at a time, any longer and I find my neck getting sore and I can't focus as well on the details. I like painting things that aren't quite perfect, like the still ripening rose hip. I love making the colours blend into one another. Jagged, spiky shapes of the sepals, contrasting with the smooth, shiny surface of the rose hips, are what drew me to paint them. These will fall off as the fruits ripen and are ready to be picked. I think you need that contrast in the composition to make it interesting to look at. I'm always drawn to images with a lot of strong contrast between dark and light. I love painting shadows and working out where the light will hit the object. I added the dark spots to the fruit while the paper surface was still slightly damp. I then used a large clean brush to blend in the spots so they look more natural. Rose 
chips can be eaten raw, like berries, but they are usually made into things like jams, syrups and tea. You need to be careful when eating or handling them, as the hairs on the inside of the fruit can be used to make an itching powder. A rose hip is said to be a lucky token, to bring wealth or fertility, and sleeping with rose hips under your pillow is supposed to protect against bad dreams. paintings are available as prints on my Etsy store. Purchasing a print means that you're helping to support my channel and genuinely helps me keep doing what I love and sharing that with you. You can also support me by liking, commenting or subscribing, following me on Instagram or by donating the cost of a coffee over on Ko-fi. Links to all my pages are in the video description below. to a place called Sarah's series. Middles? Don't film it! <laughs> Give the boys some dignity. I know where Jack's gonna go. Oh! Got a friend. Graceful dismount. <laughs> oh no! Hello, are you looking at the view? Or are you just looking for treats? 